an early morning. It's actually Thanksgiving Eve. It's Wednesday, November 23rd. Yeah, 23rd. I don't know when this video is going to get released, but let's talk about the project, why I did it, some of the benefits, and maybe give you guys some ideas of your own. So the reason I did this is because the ground leading up to the mill isn't perfectly parallel. And it is soft stone, so the tires can sink, especially when you have really heavy logs that you're trying to load, like the 24-foot monster pine that you saw me do in a previous video to make these two big carrying beams for the mill. So if you're not loading perfectly level or parallel with the mill, your log can end up being like this. You know, this is an exaggeration, but one end might be several inches higher than the other end. So it's really hard to get it gently set on this mill. And to be completely honest, these woodland mills, even though they're great mills, they are entry level push mills. I believe they are mainly manufactured in China. So a lot of the parts aren't super heavy duty. And I don't want to do damage to the mill. I want to keep it nice. And I just think this is going to work much better. This takes all the brunt, you know, of the logs hitting. Even if you set a 2,000 pound log gently, it's still going to have some impact. And this cable is going to take all that impact and then I can just roll it onto the mill. So I think it's going to be much less, um, you know, I don't want to say damage, but it's going to be much less stress on the mill in the future. So I actually got the idea for this. I went up to Maine, to Freiburg Fair. If you guys haven't been there and you're in the New England area, you really got to check it out. It's by far the best, you know, agricultural type fair I've ever been to. And I'm definitely going again. But while I was up there, I saw Thomas Bandsaw Mills. It's an American manufacturer of bandsaw mills similar to this. They're made in Maine. I believe they're quite a bit further up north than Freiburg. But talk about heavy duty. These... Thomas Mills, I'm going to show a couple pictures in the video, but man, they are one rugged, heavy duty looking mill. one of the things I noticed, they had this big table to hold all the logs. And then they had flip down legs so they could roll the logs onto the mill. Because they were, you know, doing demonstrations of their products. And they were also selling some of the big slabs that they were milling off. So they needed a lot of logs readily available to them. And that's kind of got my mind thinking like it usually does when I see things that I think are cool. Could I do that? Could I incorporate that into my situation? Which is exactly what I did. My table is much smaller than theirs. Theirs was metal, mine's wood, but I wanted to use stuff I had. I didn't want to spend money and go buy metal. So I used things I had hanging around. So as you guys saw, the whole table flips. And then I have a support leg to keep it from tipping over. For anyone curious, the main beam here is a six by six red oak. The two support legs are eight by eight poplar. And then the two inch flip up frame is just two inch thick pine eastern white pine. I didn't use those specific species for any reason. That's just what I had on hand. So that's what I milled up to make this. And then I got two three quarter inch threaded rods for pivot points for it to pivot on. So this way it flips out of the way. I can do my mill, walk alongside it. It's not in the way. And then when I do need it, I can flip it up. So like I said, I think this is going to work quite a bit better than just trying to set it on the mill. So I know some people that are watching are going to say you should just set the log on the mill. This is a waste of time. Well, 
That's your prerogative. My prerogative is no matter how good of an operator you are, you're gonna get that log that's a weird shape. One end might be quite a bit bigger than the other, bigger butt end versus tip end. You might sink into the stones with a heavy log. Eventually you're gonna end up, you know, kind of dropping the log and it's gonna bounce on those bunks and you're gonna end up doing damage. You might bend them, break them, you know, throw the mill off alignment out of level. If I can prevent that by using a table like this, it took me a couple hours to build, why not? So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on this custom loading table for the mill. I think it's gonna be a nice addition to my mill and I'm really looking forward to doing future projects to make everything easier. If you have any ideas of projects you'd like to see involving the mill, please leave them in the comments below. See you next time.